All right, we are now being joined by Raymond Daniels. We will get this started off with Steve Jewin, your line is live. All right, Raymond, thank you for the time as always. And my first question for you today is about your opponent, Peter Stanonic. He's only had two fights in the last two years, lost both of them decisively. Now, obviously you can go out there and get a highlight reel win and that would be satisfying, but is this as big of a challenge as you want on Friday? Uh, for me, uh, obviously the world has kind of been, uh, you know, shut down and stuff. Um, so I'm looking to, uh, continue to push myself and continue to obviously elevate, uh, you know, my, my, my challengers and the people that I'm fighting. Um, so, uh, you know, I think he, I think he's going to be a very challenging opponent. I don't think he's definitely any pushover just because somebody lost a match or two doesn't, uh, you know, define them as who they are as a fighter. But I am looking to take on bigger and better, uh, you know, pray if, if, the, if that's what you're asking, um, because I do consider myself uh, an elite athlete and I want to uh, go for the Bellator gold, which is uh, Douglas Lima. So that is my goal. That is my target um, right now. So uh, this is just another stepping stone in for me to get into that direction. Um, I'm not overlooking him by any means. He has a great kickboxing record. He, um, has lost his couple last couple of matches, but he has, I think at least nine MMA fights to my three. Um, so if you look at his experience in MMA, he actually has a lot more than I do. That's true. And you're somebody who knows a lot about not being defined by a loss because your MMA career didn't start out the way that you would have hoped it would. So you've, been very resilient in that area even though you were already a world champion in kickboxing so with all that experience weighed in those credentials in kickboxing and your renewed improvement in MMA how far away are you from Douglas Lima if you keep winning I honestly don't feel that I'm that far away from Douglas Lima um, I'm continuing to evolve as a person as a fighter um, so uh, I don't honestly think that I'm I'm, I'm too far away uh, I'm just you know kind of uh, fixing up a couple things with my jujitsu and my wrestling. I've got Joe Murphy, who's helping with my jujitsu. I've got an amazing uh, coach in uh, Mark Munoz. And now I'm with Training Lab with uh, Juan Archuleta, TJ Dillashaw, and Coach uh, Sam Calavita. Um, so my cardio is absolutely amazing right now. Um, so I, I don't think I'm honestly that far. I actually have a, a, a something I would like to present uh, to Bellator uh, in the future is uh, I am the Bellator kickboxing world champion, and I have that experience with me. Now I'm feeling at home here in the MMA world, but we're under the same umbrella. Most people uh, w are willing to try and go after something that somebody else has, meaning they'll go after another weight class title or a lower weight class title. Um, but usually they don't want to risk what it is that they have. They just want to take uh, something that belongs to somebody else. Um, as far as me, I'm uh, gonna, I want to present a, a challenge to Douglas Lima. Well, I'm willing to risk my uh, kickboxing world title versus his MMA title. They say uh, steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron. I'm willing to to, to kind of test my medal versus his medal, um, you know, and I, I think he's an amazing champion. I'm a huge fan of his, to be honest, if you want the truth. He's a, he's a, a family man, a man of Christ. Uh, he's a little bit crazy because he swims with sharks and stuff like that. You know, I follow him on his IG and stuff, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, having an opportunity to share in the, the octagon. So no disrespect to him, but he, uh, he understands that he is the wizard. Um, and uh, I'm off to see the wizard. I don't want to have to go down the yellow brick road and, and see all these different people on the way. I want to go straight to seeing him, uh, you know, and challenging him for what it is that he owns right now. Well, title versus title sounds like an amazing idea. But before I let you go, I want to touch on one thing you mentioned earlier, that the world has changed a lot since your last Bellator fight. And I know you've got an amazing team around you. You've already mentioned all of their names. But how has that changed the way that you train and prepare? Um, it, it's changed a, a few different things as far as the, the way I train, the way I prepare and stuff like that. Um, fortunately, I'm my own business owner, World Champion Karate in the city of Orange. So I have the keys to my own city, so to speak. So I have the, the ability to go in and train uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, over at, I train also over at Training Lab um, in Placentia with uh, Mr. Calavita. And uh, they actually have been doing a great job of, of making sure they're keeping all the athletes safe 
safe. They've been doing a weekly test with us, uh, you know, just to make sure that, uh, you know, we're doing COVID tests, we're doing temperature checks, we're doing all these different types of tests to make sure that our athletes are staying safe. And we're doing them uh, several times a week uh, to make sure that we can still train and we can still compete um, to the best of our ability. So, uh, you know, there has been, you know, some extra hoops to jump through, but uh, as with life, um, you get thrown different roadblocks and challenges and it's our job uh, to, to try and overcome those. And uh, we have uh, done that together as a team. All right, next question from Giancarlo. Hi, Raymond. Uh, just brought up there also like uh, your first transition to MMA, you came out on the losing end in 2008, but uh, now you're on back-to-back -back wins in Bellator. Just what was something you took away from your first attempt in MMA that has really helped you in uh, the second attempt in Bellator? Uh, I think um, just the, the humanizing experience. I always try and tell fighters that are coming up to kind of like never believe your own hype. You know, some people get carried away in it. Um, you, you see all these fighters, they start to talk about this, even start to talk about themselves in different person, third person or whatever the case is. But don't believe your own hype. When I was younger, um, I was kind of caught up in believing my own hype, so to speak. I was an undefeated kickboxer. I was knocking people out with stuff that people have never seen before. So I was kind of like, yeah, I'm the man, you know, uh, you know, as a young man, that's what, that's what you believe. You believe that you're untouchable. Um, and when I went into that first experience, I had zero training in wrestling, zero training in uh, jujitsu. Um, I honestly didn't have any Muay Thai training. I was just a, a sport martial arts competitor that enjoyed uh, competing and it didn't matter uh, the arena. I always felt that if you are a fighter, somebody should be able to tell you the rule set and you should be able to go and compete against the best of the best in that rule set. And uh, that was a rude awakening for me as a, as a young man, a very humbling uh, experience in life, but uh, one I would never take back, to be honest, because I opened my eyes to, to different things. Some people look at like, oh, you lost here or you lost there. Um, you know, it's like, oh, you got beat. But for me, I look at them as uh, learning experiences, opportunities for me to improve myself as a person, myself as a fighter. So yes, that didn't go my way. But now if you look at the, say the team that I have that surrounded me because I had that experience in life. Uh, now I'm able to look back, reflect on that, make the corrections, the necessary corrections that I need. And now I'm, I'm coming out and giving people highlights in MMA uh, now at 40 years old that not even 20 or 30 year olds can do. Um, that's just for me learning from earlier life experiences and uh, taking those experiences and continuing to evolve as a mixed martial artist. And the final question for me, like your last fight was in January. So you've had some time off now, uh, especially now with this shutdown. So uh, was there an area of your game that you were able to really improve on and take advantage of uh, while well, this time off? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of things kind of got shut down and stuff like that, but I've continued to, to evolve with my, my wrestling and my jujitsu and stuff like that. Uh, continuing to make myself more of a, an, an all around, uh, fighter. I've had the great opportunity of training with some, uh, amazing mixed martial artists. I've trained uh, with GSP, Woodley, uh, Rory, um, Sean Strickland, uh, Ryan Hall. So I've been able to train with, uh, you know, some of these different, uh, guys, uh, with so many different levels. So I, I know that where, where I am with my stand-up fighting uh, is I, I'm really strong, um, So, but I needed to improve on my wrestling and my jujitsu. And that's what I've been working on because uh, anybody in MMA that tells you that they're going to try and stand up and fight with me, um, that is always a good thought or something good to say. But then I think once they get in there and they start moving around with me, they'll turn to a wrestler or to a jujitsu artist really quickly. Um, so I know that uh, not anybody in the MMA world uh, will want, I, I know they consider a lot of the guys like, oh, this guy's the best stand-up guy. This guy's the best this, um, but they haven't, uh, now I'm here in, in MMA. Uh, so I think that I, I, I bring a different precedence to the, the MMA arena um, because not only my kickboxing experience, but um, people don't recognize my sport karate experience. And uh, that's what uh, makes the, the biggest difference. So I've improved in those areas though, but in my jujitsu and my wrestling a whole lot with Mark Munoz and uh, Joe Murphy. All right, next question, Rick Sanchez. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. All right. My question is, um, with your fight coming up this Friday, how mentally prepared are you to be back in now in the Bellator, um, Bellator cage and now, like right now, what's going on with this pandemic? 
Uh, that's a, that's an awesome question. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, there's a there's a lot of uh, different things going on in the life and uh, are in the world, um, you know, so I think it's giving people an opportunity to spend time with their family to to enjoy their loved ones. But it's also put a reality check. Um, you know, uh, we've lost a a lot of great people. I, I'll just even say superheroes. You know, we lost the Black Mamba. We lost the Black Panther. Um, you know, so uh, for me, I look at this as a great opportunity to go out and to be able to uh, to perform and become that superhero kind of for the public. I, I get to fight. I'm honored to be able to fight on 9-11 when it's a, it's a day in, in, in our history where we've, uh, you know, we lost a lot of, of good people, um, you know, to acts of violence. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, safe violence going on in the world right now because of, of different, you know, things, different beliefs, different, um, you know, bigotries that people feel. Um, so uh, I think it's, it's awesome to have the opportunity to go out and to, uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Don't worry. I'm COVID free. Uh, doesn't come through the. Uh, I hope it doesn't come through the camera now. Actually, but uh, you know, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, different things that are going on in the world, and and so for me to, uh, you know, for Bellator and Paramount Network to give us the opportunity and the platform to go out and and to inspire people or to to relate to people, or, um, and and that's what I look. That's what I look at is what I do. That's why I go out and I perform the way I perform. That's why I fight the way that I fight is to go out and to be able to inspire people that, um, you know. So so my mind is my mind is always focused i'm always ready to fight world-class athletes i do it on a daily basis um so uh i don't think it'll make it any different um but like i said i'm, I'm honored to be able to fight on 9-11 jay thanks very much and uh raymond you know you talked about age and the wisdom you've acquired in a sense you feel like a bit of a late bloomer when it comes to mma and does that mean you might be able to carry on a little bit longer than into your 40s than uh, perhaps otherwise yeah, no, that's a, that's an awesome question. A lot of people ask me, they're like, okay, man, you know, you, you know, you're like, even when I'm going to get to, like, I had to do extra medical stuff this time, um, you know, with the doctors and stuff because I'm 40. So, um, uh, so a lot of people are like, oh, you know, how much longer are you going to do this? Uh, the beautiful thing is that I come from a different background than the typical MMA person. I'm not the typical MMA athlete, obviously, even with the way I fight is not typically like an MMA fighter say would fight. Um, so, I come from a sport martial arts background, I come from as a martial artist. Uh, martial arts is kind of like the fountain of youth. That's what I call it. Uh, you know, I have a martial arts program in, in the city of Orange called World Champion Karate. I'm dealing and teaching future generations. So uh, that keeps me very, very young and very energetic because I'm working with uh, tomorrow's future or whatever we want to call it or however you want to look at that. So so for me, yes, I, I, I guess you would say I, I'm a late bloomer, bloomer, but I always arrive on time. Um, so uh, I've... I like to kind of, you know, dominate whatever field it is that I that I come to. If you look at it, I've always risen to the top in every organization that I've ever competed in, um, from back on my sport karate days on NBL and NASCAR to when I competed in the Chuck Norris League. My team went to number one. I was the MVP. We won the championship. When I was fought in glory, I became the number one fighter and fought for the title. Came short because I got my eye cut. Uh, Bellator kickboxing. I uh, climbed the ladder in that, became the Bellator kickboxing champion, and now I've arrived in MMA. Um, I'm 40, but you won't meet a 20 or a 30 year old that can, that it will be faster, um, faster than I am. So, uh, even though say these guys are younger than me because of my experience from where I come from, I've never met. And this comes from even, even competing and sparring against some of the top guys like GSP, Woodley, Rory, um, all these guys, I'm always even faster than all of them. Any of the young a couple of my sparring partners were in their 20s and I'm still uh, 10 times faster than they are. Um, and I think it's just from my background. So yes, late bloomer, but late to the party, but I'm here and uh, I'm bringing a whole new, whole new dynamic to the game. Well, glad to see you here. One more for me. The other factor that you've got is a partner, a wife who also fights as well. How important is Colby as a sounding board, as support for you in competing? Oh my gosh, you have no idea how... Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I'm just, we just uh, celebrated our first uh, anniversary uh, on the 24th this year with quarantine. So we weren't able to go out and celebrate like we wanted to. Uh, so a year married now, um, but it, it's amazing having a life partner um, that uh, shares in my passion um, because she understands like, even though it's our anniversary, we couldn't go out and celebrate it like we wanted to because she knows that I had this fight coming up. So I can't, uh, she knows that I'm not able to break my diet. She, she's there for me to cook me breakfast breakfast to help me with my laundry, to help me get my supplements and my pads and everything together. So um, I think uh, the reason why people are able to see uh, me blossom like this is, is, is a huge part to her. I've never been uh, so, uh, so much, uh, so well balanced in life, uh, you know, uh, as far as physically, um, you know, thanks to training lab and coach Cal. Um, spiritually you know colby's uh, reintroduced my relationship with god uh emotionally and my love life um you know it, it, it's amazing so uh, i think that everybody is able to actually see me uh truly balanced and come out there and compete and uh when your mind body and your soul are all one uh, i think that's when people are able to see things like the the 720 punch and see me come out and compete because uh i am so well balanced and that balance has come from her all right, our last question comes from Zach Harkins. Hi, Raymond. Thanks for the time today. No problem. So you mentioned earlier that you have your eyes on Douglas Lima and the welterweight strap, and that's obviously understandable. Now, you two have a common opponent as you fought Michael Venom Page in kickboxing, <laughs> and he fought him in MMA. So as someone who's watched that fight, I'm sure, and someone who has the kickboxing pedigree probably higher than Michael Venom Page, what do you think that he did wrong that you could do better in terms of technical kickboxing when fighting Douglas Lima? Oh, that's an, that's an amazing question. I was uh, honestly looking forward to, uh, to seeing that fight. And, uh, you know, I, I think Mike made a mistake and that's what got him caught. Um, I think uh, Mike and I, Mike and I uh, have different styles. Um, even though we look, similar people think that think that we look at it, but the, the one of the key factors that we have is because we come from a similar background um if you had a superpower our superpower would, would be to control time and space so we can control time and space better than everybody so that's why when people f see us and they fight when they fight and they're like oh why does this guy look so bad it's because we can control time and space and that other person doesn't understand that uh i think where mike uh the uh i think he had uh uh, Lima hurt, um, and Mike. Uh, Mike's always been a bit of a prankster, or jokester when he uh, fights and when he competes and stuff like that. Um, and I think uh, that's kind of hurt him even in the past fighting, where he's playing around instead of just dominating somebody or finishing somebody off. I think he hurt Lima, and he went to kind of play and clown around when you have to realize the caliber of opponent that you have across from you. Uh, at least this is just this is me being the fly on the wall outside looking in, uh, realizing the caliber of opponent that you have in front of you when if he would have stuck to his basics he would have almost because he staggered Lima I think he would have been able to finish him but he kind of went to playing around a little bit and that's what ended up getting him caught with uh, the kick to the leg and then he made the mistake of getting up panicking and getting up and got caught with a beautiful uppercut um, but uh, yeah no I think that that's where he really made the mistake um, Mike and I are two completely different fighters. If you look at our offense, you look at our defense, you look at our skill set as far as what techniques we throw and the volume that we put out, uh, I think it would be a, an, an entirely uh, a different fight. And I think Alima is probably one of the best uh, stand-up fighters, uh, all, just all around uh, welterweights in the world, uh, even whether people want to give him the credit uh, where it's due or not. He's an awesome, amazing stand-up fighter. And uh I think he, like I said, he's one of the best and he's kind of ran through the entire division, but now I'm here in the division and I'm a different animal uh, when it comes to that. So I, I would love the, the opportunity to go out and, and test my skill set. And that's, like I said, no disrespect towards him or towards Mike. I think they're both amazing athletes. I would love to see that fight again, see uh, Mike grow because that's the first opportunity that someone's ever put him back where he's had to evolve and had to grow as a person, as a fighter. And uh, I think Mike's an amazing athlete. Uh, I think Lima's an amazing champion, um, but uh, he, like I said, he was considered the best uh, stand-up artist in MMA, but now you have to realize that I am here in, in MMA, not just in the kickboxing world anymore. All right, and thank you very much. With that, we will uh, end things with Raymond, and we will be back.